Hi friends, I just figured out how depth to image works and it's quite late in New York so I apologize if I'm a little bit slow but I would like to share with you how to use it. So uh, first of all, it's not a part of web UI, user interface, so we will have to kind of install it and use it separately with depth to image and I'm pretty sure this is going to change quite soon but at first I would like to show you what it actually is so uh, you may have seen this image if you were curious about depth to image and here if you write something like a woman wearing glasses um, photo Realistic, award winning, um, maybe 15 millimeters, uh, sharp focus. And if you write around this prompt, you will see that the result image, the face of the person, will be just turned in the same direction and it is just amazing it generates a depth map so you don't have to generate a depth map it generates it by itself and then it kind of turns the face into the direction that we want and it kind of just fills it up this depth of um, this depth map so the depth map what it is it's like the parts that are dark those are further away and those that are bright and light those are closer to us so that's how it manages it kind of analyzes this image and then it builds this de depth map and then it can generate a portrait that looks into the same direction and kind of has same proportions which is pretty incredible if you upload um, a logo like this one like a little house and if you write a yellow house on a white background and if you press run it will just generate a house that is facing exactly same direction but it will be of a different color and you can add 3d a yellow house with a red roof and as you can see it just again analyzes its shape and it builds a depth map and then it will make a house and this way you can play with different objects and you can also play with different um, portraits or you can even use blender I use Blender and I <laughs> I use this monkey, it's a default uh, monkey, if you're familiar with Blender, it's just uh, one of the default models and I made a render out of it and then I just um, would use this monkey and if you are better at blender than i am i'm just learning i started learning it you can texture it you can make it something more complicated and you can say a photorealistic monkey on a green background Well, this is not very photorealistic, so I probably will say a monkey um, animal, well, maybe not wildlife, photography, award winning, um, 15 millimeters hyper-realistic something like this let's try this again um, but yeah you can pretty much yeah this is so much better look 
this is a very cool realistic monkey's face so as you can see you can play with different portraits and you can um, you can generate different things uh, this is on the cover of this tutorial and if you say a young woman wearing a VR headset and you see a young woman wouldn't have a beard but the thing is because it has a beard it it would need to fill it with something so I would say and wearing a scarf on a dark background and now let's see what is going to happen this is a little bit more tricky because the mouth is open and yeah but still it's it's not so bad like it definitely looks in the same direction it tries to feel it also you can change the seed this is still kind of in development and i can see how this is probably going to be part of web ui quite soon um but for now i just want to show you this if you want to play because i was so excited um, and it took a while to figure out how to install it so just bear with me and i will tell you how to do it step by step so to make it easier for you i made a helper for you on my web page uh, chris.art slash helpers and this is this one and if you click it first you need to install anaconda which is an environment for python it it's, makes it so much easier just press download and wait for a couple of uh, seconds um, and here it is it downloaded and i will just press open and i'll just install it and everything is by default so you just um, press it all and wait for it okay it completes it in the installation you just need to press next and next and over here just um, uncheck those two um, things and press finish so and then go back to Chris helpers and they'll be the next step so now we installed uh, anaconda which is going to help us a lot and we are going to install stable diffusion and even if you have stable diffusion and you're using web ui you'll still need this one like separately so uh, if you don't have github account definitely um, sign up for it and go to code and download zip And then you will just need extract to and here make sure uh, if you follow this tutorial you just select C no other uh, no other folders and just press OK um, because it's going to create um, a folder and uh, everything I, I wrote in helper it's going to be this folder stable diffusion main it unzips in this folder so make sure that there is nothing else it's like all those folders because previously when I was doing it I created this folder and then it had two folders which were the same and it made me it made it really hard to write um, code that you have to write a little bit um, so just make sure it it's named like this and there is nothing else if you just extract it uh, to see right away this is going to be like this and then again go back to the helper and then you need to start anaconda the one that we just installed so if you go to your uh, programs and you just uh, type anaconda prompt uh, it will be here and to make it easier if you go here in your panel and just um, now and pin it and pin it because mine was pinned so yours probably was unpinned so just pin it so it's always here 
and now you have this anaconda and all you need to do is to copy this copy and then it doesn't work with the mouse so you need to press control control V okay again copy and control V so or you can type it CD we, we are just changing di directory and we are in this directory now and now we are just going to um, copy paste this code again control C and then control V and just run it and all of this you can read if you go to this uh, link those are those commands they are on this website i just copied them to make it easier for you and it's going to install all these different things it needs and the versions that it needs and that's very convenient because if for example you have different versions of those things it doesn't matter because it it will just uh, create an environment that has all the versions it, it needs and we will be able to activate it to activate this particular environment and not worry that which version of each product we have i think it's absolutely amazing okay now it's installed and it would tell you to activate this environment use conda activate ldm which is exactly what we are going to write. We'll just write conda activate LDM. And here we are. So this is, this, this is um, where we are. I think it, it, it has done it before, but because I'm so sleepy, I did it again. And it's okay because until we deactivated, this environment will be activated. So next thing we need to do is update stable diffusion for version number two. So for this, we will just copy this three um, commands and again, control C and we'll go to this and control V and just press enter. Yes, and it says successfully installed stable diffusion, which is great. So now what we need to do is we need to download SD depth files. And um, if you uh, don't have Hugging Face, you need to go to Hugging Face. And uh, all of it is written here, but you can just go to Hugging Face, um, login and you need to download this uh, 512 depth EMA and then you also need to download this file which is um, this hybrid Midas PT and um, when you do that you need to um, put those files into uh, folders. So if you go to C and stable diffusion main, um, let me just move this window a little bit because I wrote it for you to make it easier. Um, wait a second. Okay, so it says download uh, this uh, 512 depth EMA uh, to stable diffusion like you need to create this um, folder models so if you go to stable diffusion main you create new folder call it models and then I create another folder just to make it look a bit like um, automatic that I usually use for stable diffusion and make sure I spelled it right and here it goes and um, 
it's still downloading but i actually already downloaded this before we before this tutorial so i'm just going to find it and you make sure that you wait until it's completely um, downloaded but mine is already here and i'm just going to copy this and paste it to modules and yeah i already downloaded it before so this one that is downloading it's a it's just a duplicate i'm going to just stop it because i just wanted to show you that it downloads um, and if something happens to those links which I don't think will be the case but if anything happens if something changes you can just go to this and you can just fa find those uh, depth EMA and this other file so for the other file you need to go to a stable diffusion again and here you create another folder called um, this Midas Models. Midas Models. And you just, you just, um, doesn't let me do it, but let's just, um, again, here it is. Copy. And paste it to me this models. So yeah, here we are. So now we are actually getting ready to run our depth to image, which is quite exciting. And we need to run these two uh, commands first. Gradio is actually a user interface that uh, looks a little bit like. Um, web UI if you use it. Um, it may be very, very excited to see that. Um, yeah, so I just uh, I just copied uh, Gradio and just press enter. And yeah, after this, after this is successfully installed, all you need to do is to run this one line. This is the this is Python Python script. And again, just control V and press enter. Yes, here we are. And you just copy this, control C, and you paste it in your browser. And woohoo, here we are. And here now you can just again use any um, image like, uh, I don't know, maybe this old man or something and then you go here so sometimes you may use an image and try to run and it will show you an error and most of the time the reason why is because the file is too big so uh, if you followed my tutorials in the past you already know this website but if not there is this website it's called birme.net and you can just go here and browse from your computer uh, the file and just resize it to 512 by 512 uh, and this usually works a hundred percent and um, i also recommend you to reload this page if something like that happened to you and just yeah just drag this new file that you created and maybe um, say something like princess in a green background or painting make sure to open this and um, seed you have to set it up yourself it's not automatic uh, just yet and uh, just press run and this shall work. Uh, it happened to me a few times and I noticed that if I make my image uh, smaller, it usually works. I hope it was helpful and hope you create a lot of things and just experiment on this is just really funny. And have a lovely day and I'll talk to you soon.